I'm Lucy Douglas. I'm a family nurse practitioner and owner and CEO of New Beginnings Wellness Center and Spa in Ruston, Louisiana. I've been a nurse for 22 years. I've been a family nurse practitioner for eight years and I've been privileged to own my practice since 2013. I really want to tell you a little bit about myself though, beyond my education. Um, I've had a very distinct and unique journey that's brought me to where I am and, and the whole reason behind why New Beginnings was born. I was a very regular nurse for a long time. I worked in a variety of settings, in the hospital, in home health. I traveled all across North Louisiana into East Texas, taking care of a wide variety of different patients with different needs, including pediatric patients. I really began to observe a very distinct lack of quality of care, especially having the privilege of being in people's homes and following up on usually an inpatient setting. And I have to tell you that one of the huge impetuses for pushing me to move beyond being a registered nurse and pursuing advanced education to become a nurse practitioner was I actually wanted to be in charge. I wanted to have the opportunity to more holistically approach people's problems and give them all the education and support that, that they needed in order to be successful. I know that as a nurse, I was probably one of those nurses in the nurse's station talking about a patient who we would label as non-compliant. But what I began to realize that it was, it was a much deeper problem than non-compliance uh, to whatever the treatment plan was. It was at its core, a complete lack of knowledge and education about what was going on with them. And so they weren't able to make any kind of meaningful changes because they did not understand what was happening, why, and how they got there and how they could move away from that place of poor health to something better. So I became a diabetes educator in 2005 because I was particularly interested in that disease process and I was observing the massive toll on life, on quality of life diabetes is taking here in our area. Um, I, I observed complete passivity on the part of healthcare professionals who had bought into the lie that there's nothing that can be done about this. It's, it's perhaps an inevitable process that happens as we get older and once it happens, there's nothing that can be done to fix it, reverse it, or even um, aggressively treat it to, to achieve a better outcome. And, and something inside me just screamed no, that that should not be the norm, that should not be the thinking that we have. I would go to my national educational meetings each year, and I would see that these meetings were sponsored by large pharmaceutical companies. And the topics of many of my sessions that I would attend were including the word management. And, and, and again, something inside of me screamed, no, no, we cannot manage diabetes. We are managing people with, with diabetes and other cardiovascular disease right into the funeral home. That's where they're ending up. That's the path. How long does the path take? It could be their, the whole of their adult lives where there's profound lack of quality, lack of vitality, and just a, a slow, painful decline that not only affects that patient, but everyone around them. And it's hor horrifically expensive. So we cry about healthcare costs, yet I don't see us as a healthcare profession really doing anything to, to address that way back over here at the root. So all of these things were what propelled me forward for more education to become a nurse practitioner so that I could have a, a say, if you will, in these journeys for patients and help them have a better outcome and a better quality of life. I married my husband in February of 1988. I thought I wanted to be a pilot and that's how our paths crossed because that was his profession. But apparently, there were other plans for me. And I had a bachelor's and a master's in English and I was teaching in higher education. And in 1995, I had two young women that were in my class that were my age 
and they were in my office one day and they were talking about what they were in school for. We were talking about their essays, I was giving them feedback on their writing and we had just, I'd taught them now, that was the second quarter I'd had both of them. So we, you know, had a nice rapport. And when they started talking about working on their prerequisites for nursing, I, I, I don't know what possessed me, but I opened my mouth and I said, I think I could do that. My mom was a nurse and she tried to tell me to go to nursing school, but I was bound and determined I was gonna be a pilot. And that's why I chose Louisiana Tech and that's why how I ended up in Reston. And that was so terrifying. I opened my mouth and I said this thing and it was like I set into motion this chain of events that's now just sort of taken on a life of its own. And so I went downstairs. I was in George T. Madison on Louisiana Tech campus. And these two young women took me downstairs and introduced me to the secretary in the nursing department. And the rest, shall we say, is history. But I remember I had to tell my husband and we were driving to Shreveport in our 1989 Dodge Caravan. And I had planned this very specifically. I needed witnesses while I sprung this on him um, that I wanted to go back to school. And so I felt like it might like be a little more lighthearted if I had people in the car and the four of us were going to eat dinner in Shreveport. And he's driving, I'm in the passenger seat and I'm like, babe, I need to tell you something. And he's driving, he goes, what is it? And I said, and, and hear how I worded this. I said, I think I'm supposed to go to nursing school. He's driving, he goes, okay. And I'm like, oh, hold up just a minute. <laughs> You're not really sure of what you've just committed to. Because we had been through my master's in English together. And I will tell you, I was not a stellar student because I was not passionate about my subject matter. So I was lackadaisical about assignments and just waiting to the last minute and doing things. And, you know, I'm not proud of that, but that was, I just, you know, I was sort of just going through the motions, still not feeling like this is my thing. So I say this to him and he's very fine, like very agreeable. And I wanted him to understand that we were getting ready to embark on a journey like we had never been on. We had two young children at this time, okay? So I had a two-year-old and a six-year-old. And he was always the kind of dad and husband that was like suiting up and in the game. Like there was not a, that's your job, this is my job, you know, he wasn't that way. So I knew I could count on his support, you know, for whatever I needed and to maintain a balance in our family. And so the kids would have what they needed. I was very concerned about that. So I wanted to, I wanted to, to fulfill what I felt like was a very strong pull on me to do this very particular thing, but also not shortchange the people that I was responsible for, my two children and my husband. And so that's how my journey into nursing began. And it, that first degree was pretty tough. Um, but I knew pretty quickly getting into it early on that I felt very, I felt strong confirmation that I was where I was supposed to be. Well, then in um, August of 16, we heard words that nobody ever wants to hear. We heard words of, you have cancer. And so my husband was diagnosed with um, stage four bladder cancer in August of 2016. He had surgery in October of 16. And, you know, we went through a three-year journey of treatments and blood work and doctor appointments and trips to MD Anderson and just anyone who's hearing me and you've done this, you know, you are, you know. You know how hard it is. And so here I am, the healthcare professional, who has also a very particular mindset about disease and where it comes from and how we should approach it, yet I have to respect the choices that my husband made along the way of how he wanted to do things. And so that was tough because I was screaming from the rooftops, I wanted a certain thing and but he was a grown man with a mind of his own and he wanted this. So that's what we did. 
and we had three years together and then he passed away in October of 19. And, you know, that was a really hard time for me. And, but I, I look on it and I think about my life now in the context of him and his support for me and his love and how proud he was and just how um, supportive and excited for me to, to have my dream come true, to have my own practice. And so every day when I come to work now, I feel like he's there, you know, I feel like I get to honor that, which I don't know that a lot of husbands would have signed up for what he signed up for. And he did it five times. <laughs> so we're driving to the new office. I think this has probably been in progress for at least two years, if not a little bit longer. And so it just is a fresh start. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be so beautiful. So I'm very proud of that. Just, just for the beauty of the space and what it will represent to our patients, to our spa clients, it's not, it's going to be like next level. There's not going to be any, any place that can touch us from here to Dallas, as far as the beauty of our space and how we want that to be so welcoming when people come in to see us that um, we want you to feel special. We want you to feel that this is a very peaceful environment. Um, welcoming and that you just feel like you can just breathe when you walk in our doors and so we're very intentionally wanting to create a very beautiful atmosphere so all of that can happen and you can begin just to relax whether you're coming to us for a spa service an aesthetic service or to see me as a medical patient so it's just it's just a new beginning and I, I love that I chose that name for my practice in 2013 not couldn't have imagined what my life would have been like six years later and all that I've been through and, and uh, come through. And I think, and I will say I'm still thriving and this is my new beginning. My name is Mary Arthur Plett. I am a wrestling girl. I've been here my whole entire life and I have been coming to New Beginnings for many years. Um, and I've had the pleasure of getting to work with, with Lucy throughout both of my pregnancies. One September day, I was driving probably to get coffee because that's what I always do. <laughs> and I decided to stop and just chit chat with Lucy because she is a really dear friend of mine. And I was sitting on her couch and we were just talking about marriage and life and church. And she asked me about babies. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm glad you asked. A few months ago, I had gotten out my, my birth control and I said, I haven't gotten pregnant yet. I'm, I'm really not that concerned about it though. We're just gonna kind of wait and just see what God has in store for us. and. If, if you know Lucy, she always has help and she is always there with her advice and her wisdom and her supplements. And so she said, I have something for you. Um, I know in the past we've talked a lot about your hormones and that, that that actually plays a huge part in conceiving. This blew my mind. It was something that she's not really ever talked about. And so I jokingly was like, okay, I'll take it. And so went went home. I started taking this chase the berry is what it's called and i started taking it sporadically super randomly and two months later i would never forget i was at home and i thought something doesn't feel right i feel a little bit sick but i'm sure it's just i haven't had my coffee yet <laughs> and i took a pregnancy test and it immediately popped up um, and it was it was a positive test and i I texted her because it was super early. I was like, I don't, don't want to wake her up. And I just said, hey, I'm pregnant. And she calls me. And we were both just screaming on the phone, laughing, giggling. And she was like, I can't believe it. I was like, I can't either. <laughs> and so she's like, why don't you come in? Let's come in soon. As I said, great, I'll be there in like five minutes. <laughs> she was like, well, let me put on my makeup first. <laughs> and so I come in and we draw labs. And she was like, I'm so excited for you, Mary Arthur. She actually prayed over me. And I said, great, um, just let me know like if anything big happens. And I remember going home that 
that afternoon and that's when all of my my bleeding started um and from week five to week nine i had very heavy bleeding but that but that day she called me and she was like hey i feel like we need to, to put you on a vaginal progesterone suppository and i was like something isn't right i keep on bleeding but my doctor won't won't see me until week eight um and she's like why don't we start this let's kind of start you off on, on on a higher dose and then as soon as we we get these lab results back we will just go for from there um and i know if she had not started me on that then i would not have had her um and so we got we got my lab results back and lo and behold, my body doesn't make, make progesterone. And I'm super thankful that not only is Lucy incredibly wise, but that she follows Christ. And she said, I just knew that day that God told me that this is what you had to have. And I'm just incredibly thankful for, for that. My name is Emery and I've been working at New Beginnings for six years now. Um, I've learned so much from my mom during this time. There's a lot that I could say about her, but if I had to choose a few words, I would definitely say that she's passionate, caring, intentional, driven, and strong. She's been through a lot in the past few years, but through it all, she's persevered and continued to grow new beginnings into what it is today. I'm super excited for our new location, and I know that it'll be successful because of my mom.